Hello, today we're going to review Asians Are White by Min Zhao or Asians Are Black by Jamie Kim. Are Asians Becoming White by Min Zhao? This is a quote from Eric Liu, a best selling New York Times author who actually went to Harvard and also was the speechwriter for President Clinton. So he was pretty much seeing the top echelon of society. And this is a quote from his, his best selling book. He's Chinese American. I was never asked to be white. I am not literally white. That is, I do not have white skin or white ancestors. I have yellow skin and yellow ancestors, hundreds of generations of them. But like so many other Asian Americans of the second generation, I find myself now at the bearer of a new strange status, white by acclamation. Thus, that's what I've described as, quote, honorary white by other whites and, a quote, as a, quote, banana by other Asians. But the honorific and the epithet takes on a given idea to the extent that I've moved away from the periphery and towards the center of American life. I become white on the inside. Some are born white, others achieve whiteness, while still others have whiteness thus thrust upon them, thus supposedly it is what it means to assimilate. So that's a food for thought. He, he, he identifies as white. He says he's white on the inside. He's gone to the top. So again, my question when I start this lecture is, are Asians white? Well, let's even go back to the name Asian American. Asian American is a completely made up name. It's actually made up by these two grad students in 1968, these two Berkeley grad students, Emma G and Yuji Ichikom, Ichikoka, um, who created the Asian American Political Alliance and the UCLA founders of, of the program. So it was interesting, there were a couple and they said, you know what, how are we gonna get all these different Berkeley Asians get together? We get the North uh, Asians, East Asians, Southeast Asians, East Asians, let's just all call them Asian American. And so that's what they did and that's what they did. They created the term. So remember his name, Yuri. But there's other terms for Asian American. There's a PETA. Now, this is a new term, Asian Pacific American. Uh, you see Cal State San Diego has a new center called APIDA Center. Now, you see an AAPI, which is Asian American and Pacific Islanders. You see Asian and Asian diaspora, which is basically a very political stance, talking about how Asians have been discriminated against their entire time in the United States. So let's take out uh, the American and just say we're Asian or Asian diaspora. There's also Brown or DC. Now DC is also a political term because it means South Asian American, but also it's exclusive because it also really um, puts on top of South Asian experience on top of Pakistani, Sri Lankan, Afghani. Uh, so again, a very political term. And what about Armenians? Are Armenians West Asian Americans? You tell me. There's also a movement to take the PI, which is Pacific Islander, out of the AAPI. For example, Native Hawaiians, they have seven times more COVID-19 um, uh, infections and much more deaths than Asians and whites. And thus people say, you know what, we have to disaggregate and uh, look at their specific issues. Because if you keep putting the API, the PI is really going to be sucked into the like very high numbers for Asian Americans. And you're not going to see that how PIs are overrepresented in prison and also have one of the lowest gra college graduation rates. They have similar outcomes to any Americans. Now, Asia is an imaginary. Asia constitutes 30% of the Earth's total mass, as well as 60% of the world population. Now, if you ex include the actual diaspora, you're talking about 60 to 66% of the world population. So goodness gracious, that's a lot of Asians. And again, as Edward Said has said, Asia is a source for the West and how it defines itself in opposition, right? And that's for another lecture on Orientalism. Let's take a, let's take a look at Asia. Asia is uh, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, that's Central Asia. And again, multiple countries, they have very differing uh, identity. Or is Asia South Asia? Sri Lankans, India, Nepal, Bangladesh, Afghanistan again, you see this overlap, okay? Or is Asia Southeast Asia? Now that's 15% of the Asian American population. Malaysian, Singapore, Laos, uh, Brunei, Indonesia, just a highlight Indonesia and Philippines, a huge gigantuan population 
of millions of people. Uh, I think it's fourth most populated in the world. And so again, how can you even say they're one group, right? So I want you to think about that. Also, there's Western Asia, which again, if you went to other colleges like University of Toronto, uh, you actually would go to a department of West Asian department or West Asian studies. And you're gonna learn about Armenia, Israel, Palestine, Syria, Turkey, uh, Georgia, uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, again, Kuwait. These are very distinctive uh, Western Asian countries. Uh, one, could, uh, one could argue, uh, is Iraq and Iran, are they part of Western Asia? I don't know, you tell me. Of course, even in our fictional life, Rye and the Last Dragon, you see how Southeast Asia is depicted in a kind of a, in a kind of in a cartoon form. So I want you to do a think, pair, and share. Take five minutes, pause this uh, video, and I want you to ask, what is answer? What would what is the term that's best used to describe Asian Americans? What are the pros? What are the cons? All right, take five minutes. All right, thanks for coming back. What did you think? What is the best term for Asian Americans? Should it be kind of like the BICOP term and use a PETA, which a lot of people are doing, or is that a, a negative term? Is that exclusive, right? Um, again, this is, you see, uh, I think a good place to look is actually books that are being published, uh, centers that are being developed, and also even studies at different colleges. Um, take a look at that and see what you uh, think. There's actually a huge variety of Asian Americans um, and actually in the production right now we have around 17 Asian Americans, uh, 17 million uh, in 2022 and uh, we have 1.7 million undocumented Asian Americans so that's almost 20 million Asian Americans uh, and by the time we hit uh, 2060 we're gonna have 46 million Asian Americans. So that's a huge population. And they're actually the fastest growing because Asian Americans are the youngest. They share with Latinos that their age is young. And so they're going to reproduce even more so. So again, what is Asian American? What is Asia? Pre-contact. Well, if you're interested in anthropology, and this is where I diverge from ethnic studies and Asian American studies, I am an anthropologist. I look at theories and I, I teach this in uh, anthropology one. There's actually like uh, two pre-contact historical kind of theories about humans, all humans, millions of years, millions and millions of humans. And there's two big theories. One theory is called out of Africa and the other theory is called multi-regional. Basically it's a theory that 2 million years ago uh, about the origins of homo sapiens, we're homo sapiens. And before us, there are other hominids and one was called um, homo erectus. Now, if you're interested in uh, uh, the multi-regional hypothesis, it says Homo erectus, okay, in Africa, one to two million years ago, uh, uh, came out and they went into uh, the earth and they spread into equally, uh, they became African, uh, European, Asian, Austronesian, right? So they kind of like uh, migrated out of Africa and then they, they had the four-way uh, migration, right? And they interbreeded among each other. Now, another group, uh, these are the out of Africa hypothesis group, says that everything came out of Africa and we migrated out of Africa. And then from Africa, that's when we diverged, right? And Homo sapiens uh, after migrating out of Africa went, became African, European, Asian, Austronesian. So if you're looking for, you know, what is the most evidence, um, pretty much the most evidence I would argue would be probably out of Africa theory, not the multi-regional. But having said that, there are people who believe such as like really renowned people from University of Michigan. So again, I invite you to do your own research Make your own decision. Are we all out of Africa? Or are we, did we do a four-way split multi-regional um, development for Homo sapiens, uh, Homo erectus into Homo sapiens? Now the term white um, is also a term, it's, it's not biological. There's no such thing as white. There's no such thing as Asian. There's no such thing as black. These are, if you wanna think of, of humans in these like tight, beautiful uh, boxes of different race groups, um, you're gonna be very shocked because guess what? We all mixed. And if I took a swab, like a little cotton swab, everyone's cheeks right now, uh, to, and I, I studied and took your mitochondrial DNA, guess what? I can take you all back to Africa. So what does that mean? Um, by a lot, a race is not real, 
uh, uh, the whiteness category is not real, but do you get discriminated against uh, socially real? Yes. Do you get murdered by the police and uh, stopped by you know various and treated in, in unfairly because of perceived uh, different biological uh, racial groups? Yes, you do. Um, that is real. Uh, but is it biologically real? No. But again, we must uh, we must uh, acknowledge that you know there are real consequences of people viewing you as a different race. Now, I really want you to know that the two very important people um, who sued for whiteness, quote unquote, and citizenship. The first one is Wong Kim Ark. He was, he was a lowly, quote unquote, uh, lowly uh, restaurant worker, and he was born in 1904. Uh, he, was, he was born in the US and he sued for citizenship. And what happened was he left uh, San Francisco, born in San Francisco, and he left to go to China to look around. And he came back to us and when he came back they're like no, no no you're not you're chinese you can't come back in he's like no no i was born in san francisco and then he sued and guess what and a, a lot of people don't acknowledge this lowly um a quote unquote restaurant worker uh, but he won and it really transformed america right birthright citizenship right he's a one this chinese restaurant person so really wonderful please memorize his name uh, wong kim ark know his story because actually he's had a huge impactful uh impact and again this asian american ethnic studies class is banned in several places like texas arizona probably going to be in also nebraska and oklahoma so again they don't want you to know this so know that uh, these P asian americans have always had an impact and they've always fought back from the beginning also bang but sing trend he is Caucasoid, he's South Asian American, a uh, South Asian, and he said he's Caucasian, which is genetically true. If we're going back to the out Africa on uh, the groups, uh, he, he said, I'm white, I'm Caucasian because uh, geogra geographically and also genetically, I'm Caucasoid. Uh, and he's true, he actually sued and lost. Uh, the Supreme Court said that he's not what people think of as a quote, uh, white person. And so even though genetically and also historically, and um, origin, human origin, he is Caucasoid. He did lose. But again, I always want you to know Asians have always fought back. Now, Taco Ozawa filed for uh, United States citizenship under the Naturalization Act of 1906, which allowed, quote, only free white persons and free peoples of African nativity or persons of African descent to naturalize. Ozawa was Japanese American who was born in Japan, but lived in the United States for 20 years, did, did not challenge the constitutionality of the racial restrictions. Instead, he claimed that J Japanese people were properly cl uh, classified as free white people. Of course, there's an anthropological argument that some I knew have Kakuzoid in them. Uh, but again, he, you know, he argued that he has uh, his skin is just as white as white people. He has economics is just as much, etc. He did uh, fight for that, but he did not win. But again, I want you to know that throughout history, Asian Americans have always fought back for whatever position they've been in. Armenians, well, well, of course, Armenians are uh, in the Western Asia on the map. That's undisputed. Uh, also, uh, please do your own research and look at how Armenians have were treated in such places like Fresno. They're definitely racialized. They're called like um, something like Fresno Indians and all these things. And so again, like huge history of discrimination towards them. But you see that different Armenians in different parts of the United States identify differently racially. So you see, again, not clean, tight boxes. Some are more Middle Eastern. Um, places like Glendale, uh, some more overlap with Asian Americans, uh, some overlap is even with whiteness. So again, please uh, do your own research on that, on what is Armenian. And there is our people who are actually uh, fighting for West Asian American studies as an ethnic studies to include the racism that's been towards Armenians. And again, that would only uh, have been if they declare themselves as non-whites. And so that there's a great uh, article on Dis Dis uh, Diaspora Magazine and uh, there is uh, there's pluses and minuses, quote unquote, for the mi model minority uh, by identifying with a certain group, particularly whiteness. Now, there's underneath the model minority myth is the white, right? I do want you to know the historical uh, born evidence of what happened. This guy, William uh, Peterson, he wrote, he's a sociologist. He wrote this article and he said that, oh, Japanese Americans, they're totally discriminated against. And hey, they're the model minority. 
again, this had uh, repercussions because then you kind of like don't see Asian American pain, don't see Asian American murder, such as we've had 10,000 incidents in the last couple of years. You're looking at 2019 to con continue on into 2022, multiple murders of elderly and Asian women. Um, and again, this is Time Magazine, that's the Asian Americans and the Whiz Kids. So again, this pushing of this model minority, again, very clearly Asian Americans never called themselves a model minority. And this has been really created, fostered on them. It has probably hurt them more than anything. And it's been using Asians as a racial wedge, particularly as an anti-Black uh, wedge to hurt uh, African Americans by saying, hey, hey, Japanese Americans doing great, huh? Why are you doing so bad, African Americans? It's also used to hurt and, uh, and uh, hurt other Asian Americans, such as East Asians saying to Southeast Asians, like the Hmong, the Mian, the Cambodian, hey, why are you not doing great? Well, we're all doing great, you're embarrassing us. So again, I would argue it's also an anti-Southeast Asian and anti-Pacific Islander sort. So again, uh, terrible sentiment, model minority is pretty much similar to yellow peril. So not much so much white as being American. So one quote is, I hope to accomplish three things, to own a house, to be my own boss, and see my kids go to Ivy League. So the, the ever-changing Asian Americans, again, Asian Americans, there's fourth generation Asian Americans in San Francisco. But for the huge group now, um, including San Francisco Asians, right, who are no longer the majority, uh, the kind of aggregate, uh, if you look at the old aggregate of 20 million, the second generation, they don't really speak their native Asian American language anymore. Uh, this is versus 25% of Mexican Americans who still can, uh, oh, who can't speak. Okay. Jennifer Lee talks about how 25% of APIs are actually marrying uh, interracially. And out of the interracial, 87% of those marriages are with Anglo Americans. So these children, are these children Asian? And also 12% of these Asian Americans are identified as mixed race. So what does that mean? So again, I want to argue that um, this honorary white uh, or forever uh, or forever foreigner uh, is a trope. Uh, look at Mia Tuan's uh, the Asian ethnic experience today. Look at uh, I really want to really this one book that just came out, uh, Contemporary Asian American Activism: Building Movements for Liberation. Please read it by Diane Fujino and Robin uh, Rodriguez, wonderful uh, activist scholars. And again, you know, what, what is the, the pro and con of being white or black, quote unquote? There's, you know, for Asians, yes, there's some uh, educational parity, some income parity, marriage, quote, they're Americanized. But one can argue that they're actually much better in, in some cases, because many, there's a really viral video uh, article about how if Asians were to speak to whites or Anglo-Americans, how black or how uh, white people speak to African-Americans. In many cases, Asian-Americans out, out run, out, out, uh, out uh, do, uh, uh, Anglo Americans in many respects, such as marriage, they tend not to divorce, education, higher education rate, uh, income, some Asian Americans, but again, the other Asian Americans um, actually are doing very poorly, you don't see them. So Grace Lee Boggs argues that we should have a class based identification, we got to identify with African Americans. We have culture, uh, skin tone, um, it's kind of where you grow up. And many Asian Americans identify as African Americans. And again, pl please remember that the poverty of Southeast Asians and pretty much half of East Asians too, and the massive suffering of racial discrimination. There's real problems that, that APIs are facing, not addressed, especially if you're calling them a minority, suicide not looking for help, not getting mental health, fear of people of authority, language isolation, the bamboo theory, um, PTSD, right? With all the Southeast Asian plastic surgery. I mean, is that like an indicator they hate themselves? Discrimination of Asians towards Asians and rep reputation. And of course, Asian Americans are getting divorced and having abuse and they need help, right? And so these are not being addressed definitely if you're saying that they're the quote, honorary whites, okay? Helps nobody. So I really want to end this last slide with a suggestion on where to go in reading. And my suggestion is that you read the, the Triangulization of Asian Americans by Claire Kim. Uh, this is a great uh, article about how Asian Americans, how, they, how we should move beyond the white and black binary and how Asian Americans are very triangular, uh, if that's a word, in, in this kind of binary. So, and also lastly, please look at the quote 
uh, or hashtag Atlanta syllabus, Asian American Studies Project on Anti-Asian Violence in 2021. This would be a great article and it has wonderful um, actually articles that you can actually download. So I really, really recommend if you want to know, learn more about how Asian Americans have been attacked historically. And of course, Atlanta syllabus is because of the eight murders that happened in Atlanta, Georgia recently, and six of the eight uh, murdered victims were Asian women. And one could argue that if they weren't Asian women, they'd be alive today. And again, uh, when they interviewed the police and they commented on these murders, the police said, and please look this up, he said, the shooter was just having a bad day. And again, you know, Asian pain, Asian um, violence, again, a very invisibilized, but, you know, very trivialized as well. So again, have a wonderful day. Please deep dive more into Asian American uh, racialization.